look, I suppose the only way we stayed in Division 2, I suppose, which was a bit of a positive and hopefully now the only way is up and obviously looking forward to a very tough league campaign uh, in the February. I was watching you know, after the Tipperary game and I thought you were well prepped for that Munster final given how you eked that result out as well. It must be a disappointment for everyone just how it went against Kerry here than the Munster final itself. Yeah, big time, I suppose. It was a bit of an occasion as well, the first Munster final down here and... Um, we just didn't do ourselves justice, you know. Uh, I suppose we we got a good start. Actually, we got a couple of goals, and then they just kept tipping away the scores. And before we knew it, it was six, seven points, and you're chasing in at half time, and then they just kept hitting us in the second half. So, uh, yeah, very disappointing after such a positive start. And then you would have been hoping, right? We've got Tyrone. We've got a bit of a turnaround ahead of this one as well. They've come through a couple of tough qualifier games. You wouldn't have expected what was happening in Port Leash against them, and the, the score you conceded particularly. Yeah, big time. Um, I suppose. We've had a tough couple of years, but always kind of after a Munster final, we've kind of, uh, after kind of a bad form, so we've rebounded back and put, done ourselves justice maybe against the likes of Mayo and Donegal over the last couple of years. But um, we just didn't perform and they just completely overran us in the second half and ran up a big score and um, we had no answer from. And um, as you said, we thought it might be under a bit of pressure. They went extra time, I think, in, uh, in Avon. So uh, we were kind of hopeful of, of putting in a big performance and it just didn't happen. So looked it's going to be um, obviously a tough winter head training and then hopefully get, get the league going the right direction. I suppose that's all you can do, just dust yeah. yourself back. You know, it's the beauty of sport in many ways. There's another year. Yeah, big time. I think the majority of the squad is young and a lot of them would have had kind of opened, got a lot of games and probably might have opened their eyes a bit uh, to scale of the challenge and the level of kind of fitness and, and standard it's gone to over the last five, six years has been phenomenal. So, look, I, I think hopefully fellas will come back. <laughs> we've had a long time to think about it. I know we've been out kind of in the middle of the summer, so we'll be back fairly soon. And hopefully fellas are, especially younger lads, are really hungry and, and they really want to have a go off it. And I suppose you were unlucky. It was a disjointed year for you. You picked up an injury, you came back for an Emo semi-final, picked up an injury. Very stop-start the spring for you. Yeah, I suppose um, the last one I was injured was about 12 years ago when I was in school. So I'd, I'd been, I had a fairly good career and... Got injured in the Munster Club final, so rehabbed over the new year on the knee. Back against Schlock Neil, uh, good good victory for the club, but I, I ruptured my, my uh, flexor tendon in my finger. Um, so kind of, um, and then that required surgery after Paddy's day and probably rushed back for the tip game uh, and had little or no training done and kind of only starting to get together over the summer um, training. So uh, it was kind of a funny injury, it wasn't that sore when it happened, but it's been fairly tender to, to repair. So look, hopefully look, another go off next year and looking forward to a good winter with Cork and, and obviously hopefully a positive league. Yeah, I suppose given you know, you're one of those elder statesmen on the panel, you're one of the few with a Celtic cross um, as well. Do you feel kind of that responsibility while the team is in transition to try and leave the jersey in a better place and maybe pass on some of your experience and knowledge? Yeah, I, um, I suppose we have a lot of young guys and a lot of them are really good, really hungry and they kind of it means a lot to, to them and you know, they're, they're very hungry for success and they're obviously hopeful of turning a corner with the footballers and getting it back in the right direction. I'd be very similar. Um, I think there's only two of us left from 2010, myself and Jamie Sullivan, maybe. So, um, look, yeah, I do feel a bit of responsibility. Like, I've, I've good time for a lot of the lads, and anyway, any way I can help them, I can on, on or off the pitch. You know, I'm determined to give it a good, good go next year and um, just see where it takes us. And, you know, hopefully turn the corner as I said. Your management said after the game in Port Leach this year against Tyrone that there was, it was clear that changes had to be made but he said one thing was there was no lack of effort from the panel in terms of preparation for this year. No, it's, um, it's a really good nice panel like you know, the, um, maybe we, we might be a bit too nice do you know what I mean maybe you see the level of guys have gone to and you know kind of you saw in the Super 8 uh, the likes of Tyrone man and what they go to, to to get to that level Mayo have done it for years and they've pushed the dubs closer than anyone so as I said we have a good group of guys they're really nice and um, they're good, good guys to train in fairness um, but it's just we need to turn it into results we've had trouble putting back to back wins over the last couple of years throughout the league and throughout the championship and we just need to find some level of consistency and just have to find it some way Given how good Dublin are is it daunting for every other county trying to chase them now? Yeah I suppose it is look um I suppose a couple of years ago we were in Division 1, we're not in Division 1 now, so we're probably not at that top table to be even looking at Dublin. Do you know, we have kind of bigger problems, we need to get more consistency in our league and put back to get back to back victories together and then give a better of a count yourself in the Munster Championship, which hasn't been good the last couple of years. Um, and then, oh, geez, really try to get into the last eight or the Super 8s as it is now, do you know what I mean? So that would be a huge step up for us. I think we were really targeted to get to that last year and we didn't. So that, I suppose, push on Division 2 this year and I suppose target Super 8s should be our target really. Yeah, cause I think every team who played Super 8s, even with Roscommon who had a couple of heavy defeats, they still got the experience of playing two, three more big games. That's really something you're going to need in 2019, I would think. Yeah, I think the prime example are Kildare. Like they, they had, their, their management was under serious pressure. They hadn't won a game. I thought they, they lost all their league games, lost to Carlow, and then one big win in, in Newbridge against Mayo. And 
Jody got three more championship games as a result, so um, I suppose that, that would be our target really, and uh, the more games, the higher level, the better, especially for the younger guys. Mm. You mentioned obviously the amount of work that goes in preparing for a team and the hard work during the year. I'm sure the fact that you've got Chill Insurance back for a couple more years through to the end of 2020 is a big boost in trying to help preparations for the county, both hurling and football. Yeah, I suppose it's a mutually beneficial um, partnership really. Uh, it's a very well-known brand for us, uh, for Cork, and I suppose from Chill, they've got um, great exposure with a number of teams you know, in, in, in football and hurling. Um, the hurlers, I suppose, are on probably a bit of a bigger stage for us, so that benefits from, but as I said, like Cork are always going to be on telly um, and TV and, and in the spotlight, in, especially in hurling and in football, so um, it's, it's, it's a big partnership, and I suppose it's, it's been going a long while now, and long may continue. This week we saw the new rule changes um, being announced, the proposed ones that could come in for the league. Uh, what do you think about them? I mean, this could be the biggest shake-up in the playing Gaelic football for many a year. Yeah, I suppose the one thing is the amount of them. Like, There's just so many of them. Um, kind of like you, you'd expect them to maybe try one, two at a time. Um, I, I, I wouldn't expect all of them to go in really. Like, uh, I think a lot of them would nearly require two refs. Do you know what I mean? Kind of the, the hand passing and the sin bin and, and counting the players inside the 45s and stuff like that. So... Um, I think a lot of them are probably have a good idea, but you, you need two refs, I think, for a lot of them. I think probably three hand passes is a bit... I like the idea of the hand passes being limited, but I think three, three is probably a bit too little, you know, with the international rules, it's six. Yep. You know, so three, like, three passes could put you through for a goal, and I don't think limiting it to three hand passes will stop a blanket defence either. Uh, and I think probably the sin bin is probably one that's probably worth looking at again, to be honest with you, because the black card has probably been a bit controversial the last couple of years. Yeah, and I suppose the sin bin had a trial before a league once yeah. upon a time, and it disappeared very quickly. Yeah. Uh, the hope would be maybe it gets a fair chance this time around. Yeah, I suppose that would be the one I'd be probably most in favour is the sin bin and... Um, and, and, and probably the limiting of hand passes maybe to, to maybe five or six, but not, no, I think three is probably a bit too little. But um, as I said, it's a big shake-up. It'd be interesting to see how they all get on and you could be in for an interesting league then. As a forward, I'm sure, would you like the offensive mark to come in? The idea you catch a ball cleanly, guys can't drag you to the ground like they might do now. Yeah, we were actually just talking about it. I, I actually probably wouldn't because I think that's very Aussie rules, like, you know, to win a, a score in front of the goal. You know, I suppose it's just just, just much skill in winning the ball and taking your man on if, and if you're pulled down for a free. Uh, are getting a score. Um, it makes probably one on one defending that bit harder. But I, 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 don't, I think that's very Aussie rules. I don't think it's our game. So I think we've brought in the mark, which is from their game as well. And I think we should. I, don't, I wouldn't be a fan of that one now, to be honest with you. And as I said, it could be very hard to please for a, a ref who's caught back the field, do you know what I mean, on a quick break. So I wouldn't be in favour of that one, no, even as a forward. We'll see what the Standing Rules Committee do. Yeah. But if they do bring it in, I suppose it'll make training different for this winter when you get back with the ball. Yeah, big time. I like there are big, big, big changes. And even the kick outs in between the 45. Um, it puts a big emphasis on mar on taking the mark in the middle of the field, and you know what what you wonder then what will happen to the breaks if if guys running in, and it means that might slow down the kickouts as well as a result. Um, it could could mean actually slowing down the kickouts an awful lot. People could be very slow to get out of between the forty five. So um, yeah, it'd be interesting really. To, I suppose, and if they pa pass, you definitely have to modify your training a bit towards yeah. them. I often wonder as well when these things come in, should they come in for a year or two years to give them a chance to happen? Because say if they come in for the league and then got voted back out, you guys have prepared mentally and physically for new rules and then they're gone for championship again. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, as I say, as you said, the Sinbin was only in for one. Um, I think that was definitely worth a go for a year or two and see how it went on because the refs are only getting used to it just like the players as well. Like you know, So they need to find their feet with it as well. So um, yeah, as I said, um, it, just, it probably needs that bit of continuity really. Well, when Cadigan was joking with me earlier, he was saying, you know, it gets difficult as the years go on in terms of going back in for the winter trend and so on. What's the drive for you to keep on coming back for Cork now? Um, I suppose immediate drive was last year. I suppose, well, 2018 season was a bit of a write-off and I wouldn't like to kind of finish or have that towards the tail end of my career. I suppose big time I'd definitely like to help the younger lads try to develop and try to put Cork in kind of a good position and uh, help them any way I can. Uh, and then obviously... I obviously still think I'm good enough to play when I'm fully fit or injury free and my form is good. I definitely think I'm good enough to contribute to the, on the field to, to the team, uh, definitely. So uh, I, I still I still feel, as I said, I haven't had injuries bare this year for a long, long time. And hopefully, you know, working hard to keep the body good going into a rough pre-season. Can I ask you about this place finally? Because I was here for the first time since it was done up uh, last week yeah. for the Liam Miller match. I wasn't here actually for your game against Kerry last year. What's it like to play here? Because I mean, it's a tremendous facility, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's absolutely unbelievable. Um, I suppose I've been on the panel long enough that we've we've gone tra we go training constantly when it was the old and like the best thing about the old place was nearly the pitch itself was phenomenal. Like it was like a carpet and 
I suppose when it was full, there was always a great atmosphere, which is the best thing. But if you walk around it now, and the first thing you do when you come out here is you look up, um, to double tier stand like Crow Park. You know, it's very much like Crow Park. It's it's amazing. I suppose Cork, is, it's a big county, and it probably needs it. Do you know what I mean? And um, I suppose there's concerts now and things like that uh, have been there and are coming. So it's it's much more than a hurling and football venue. And obviously that's its primary function. But to even to play league games down here would, is a great bonus. Do you know what I mean? And and I think the pitch is sorted now. We were just commenting on the players. It's it's unbelievable. And there's been county championship games going on, and it's, it's a joy to play on. To be honest with you. Dressing rooms, is the away dressing room any bigger than it used to be? I remember you couldn't swing a cat in it once upon a time down here. You couldn't swing a small cat in it, I'd say it was not. And you just get two of them, you're, if you're, and if you're very lucky you might get a prefab out the back. But um, yeah, no, the, the dressing rooms are fantastic. That's a big change. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, like I suppose you could come down here, I remember coming down here doing weights in the middle of the winter and you'd be it was so dark and you'd be afraid people was walking around and the noises and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's unbelievable now. It's, it's a real facility. There's offices here and everything. So there's stuff on during the day constantly. Um, it's, I suppose it's, it's business now, like, do you know what I mean? So it's just like Crow Park. Well, look, the very best luck getting ready for 2019. And thanks for talking to Off The Wall. Oh, great. Thanks very much.